Before getting into the detail of the design and construction of my next clock, I thought I would just go through um, the details of the two former clocks that I've made. Um, this one I made when I was 16 or 17 years old. I was lucky enough to be given um, guidance in the making of this by the famous clockmaker Martin Burgess. We corresponded by letter and the occasional phone call and over the course of a couple of years um, I more or less finished it. However, it never really ran reliably. I kept some of his letters and those letters have inspired me to um, finish off this clock some 40 years after I started making it. The escapement is uh, based on a design by Professor Philip Woodward. Um, he called this his intermittent grasshopper escapement. And the principle of this is really simple. As you can see, there's a, a larger tooth on the count wheel which engages on the pallet, which then forces the other pallet to engage on the pinwheel, which unlocks the pinwheel and advances it by, by one minute. This is made possible by this clever little detente in the eight o'clock position on the pinwheel. So as the, um, the pendulum pulled back on the pinwheel, um, it unlocks the detente, and then when the pendulum moves forward again, the pendulum gets a it gets an impulse from the weight and the pinwheel moves on by one tooth. One thing I decided to do with the restoration of the clock was to um, include a daisy wheel for the um, for the motion work. Uh, this is a really clever design. Um, I think it was invented in the 1830s by the American clockmaker Aaron Dodd Crane. And it's essentially a, a cycloidal drive with a, a pin to stop the whole mechanism rotating. So I turn it over, you can see roughly what's happening. So my daisy wheel has um, six pins and the cam has 11 lobes. And I'm trying to um, just rotate the, uh, the minute shaft and you will see the action of the cam on the pins. So moving down the clock, you can see there's just a simple wooden pendulum. There's a lead filled bob, a very heavy bob, and which approximately compensates for um, temperature variation. There's um, a heavy weight and a counterweight on a Huygens style endless cord, which makes winding up very easy. You don't need to add any maintaining power to keep the clock going. In my next video, I want to talk about my current clock, which is very nearly finished. It was uh, made as a homage to Martin Burgess, who died in 2022 at the age of 90. It features a slow compound pendulum, a grasshopper escapement, and a Harrison-inspired remontoire. So um, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you will watch the next one.